Yes, for the truly paranoid, the cloud is someone else's computer, but it does have its uses. If you want to quickly and easily spin up an OpenBSD server on the internet, stay tuned and I'll show you one of the ways I do it and some easy code I wrote for you so that you can do it too. There are plenty of ways you can get a VPS, a virtual private server, spun up on your favorite cloud provider. Obviously, you can go around and clicky clicky in the web GUI, but who wants to do that all the time? Most good cloud providers these days have an API so that you can use other tools to work with their platforms. If you really wanted to, you can write your own tool or script in your language of choice to do that. But thankfully, there are options for the common man and the lazy man as well, of which I happen to be both. My go-to method is usually to chain a few of my favorite tools together. Packer, which can let me create immutable ISOs and images. Ansible, which Packer can use to install the software I want on the image and configure it. And then Terraform, which will let me spin up as many of those images as I want on my preferred cloud provider. The reason I like these tools is because they're very easy to learn. Also, I can build my infrastructure as code, which is the idea that I can write or code it once and have that as a single source of truth for what my systems should look like. And then all my deployments are automated from that code. They're also usually declarative in nature, meaning I can just declare what resources I want and how I want them. Also, they're cross-platform, meaning they work across operating systems. And they also work in the cloud and on-prem, aka my Proxmox server here at home. And they can create an immutable infrastructure, which is the idea that once you create a thing, you don't want to change it again after creation. And if you want to know more about why that's important, I'm going to send you over to watch this video from HashiCorp in the description. If you're just getting started with all this stuff and don't want to go and learn all three of those tools at the same time, I don't blame you and you're in luck because you can do almost all of the things that those three tools can do with just Ansible, which is, I think, probably one of the most important ones to learn anyway, if you also have physical machines that you want to manage at home as well. So that's what we'll work with in this video. First, I'll show you a demo of me using Ansible to spin up and configure a new OpenBSD server, and then we'll go over the Ansible code I wrote to do it so that you know how it works and so that you can use it yourself. Okay, first up, let's create a new virtual server on one of my preferred cloud providers for OpenBSD machines, Vulture. This code I'm using only works for Vulture, but you can easily modify it for other platforms as well, if you'd like. Okay, so I've got everything pulled up. Let's go ahead and run the first command. It's gonna be ansible playbook vulture.yaml dash e for extra vars, and then pass it vulture server name equals, and I'm going to call this Ansible demo. And this is going to take about a minute, so I'm going to speed this up for you. Okay, so it's finished. And that Ansible playbook command I just ran created a new OpenBSD server on Vulture. So we should be able to go see it in the platform and check it out. Let's just refresh here on my search for uh, Ansible-demo. And there you go, it's appeared in the portal. So we're not done yet. Let's run one more Ansible playbook to lock it down a little further and also get it ready for any further configuration we, we may want to do to it. All right, so let's run this second command. So first we're gonna put in Ansible host key checking equals false, and that's just to get rid of that initial SSH known hosts error that you'll get where you have to type in yes. Uh, you can make this permanent, you can just use this um, var, or you can ignore it and type in yes when Ansible pops up with that um, SSH host key warning. So there's that, ansible-playbook bootstrap.yaml, and then we're going to pass it some more vars, and it's going to be host equals ansible dash demo and then another one inventory group name equals git and then lastly our private dash key equals home dot ssh and then mine is called vps iv underscore rsa all right and there you go and that's going to take a second so i'm going to speed this up a little bit 
Okay, so it's all finished. Let's take a look at the output now and see what both of those playbooks ran. Okay, so I've scrolled up so that we can go over the output here. So let's check that out. So here's that first playbook and the command is ansible-playbook and then this is the name of the playbook, vulture.yaml. And I passed it extra bars with this dash E and the variable I passed it is vulture server name and the name of it was ansible demo. And you saw that get created, but let's see how that works. So it says, I'm working on localhost, and it's going to include the tasks from this, uh, this directory, roles, vulture, tasks, create vulture server.yaml. So it's gonna include all those tasks. And the first one is create a vulture server. And it says changed here. So that means it has changed something, meaning it created this vulture server. And then the next task is it prints out the IPv4 address of it. And I put that in there just in case you wanted to like copy and paste this for something. Um, it's also in the next task going to add it to your inventory group named Vulture or whatever you name yours in your Ansible um, inventory file. I'll show you that in a little bit. All right, let's see, what else do we have? Um, skipping, 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 and then it's done. So that is all that one just did is it created the server, printed out the IP address, and added it to the uh, Vulture group in your Ansible inventory file. All right, let's look at the next uh, playbook that we ran, the Bootstrap one. Okay, so we're looking at the Bootstrap one, and we passed it, uh, well, you can't really see the command right now, but it was, you know, Ansible-playbook, so that command, and then the playbook name, which was bootstrap-ansible.yaml, and then your extra variables, uh, one of them was the host name, one of them was the inventory group. So if you wanted to add it to a second inventory group, you can add it to that. And I added it to the one called git. And again, I'll show you that in a, in a little bit. And then you passed it your private key. And that's the private key that is on your Vulture portal. So the one you upload to your Vulture portal, that way you can log in as root to a brand new Vulture server. That's the one we've used here. All right, so let's look at the tasks that it went through it copied over an sshd server config so i have an sshd server config on this machine here and ansible just copied it up there and then it restarted sshd so that that would take effect so that that ssh server config will now take effect it also created an ansible user and then it generated an ssh key locally on my machine here if it didn't exist already the fact that it's green means that that key already does exist. And then it's going to add the Ansible SSH key, the public key, to the server. So it's going to copy that up to your new OpenBSD server. And then you've got set do as permissions. If you've watched my other two super long, boring uh, do as videos, you know what that does. And then it will add the host to the additional group in the Ansible inventory file. So yeah, it added it to that. And then it's done. Okay, so we've seen that it did create it, and then we just ran this Ansible playbook. Let's just quickly verify that Ansible can reach it, which means it's ready for further configuration. So we'll just uh, clear all this and say Ansible-m, so module, and the module we want to use is ping, and then we're going to ping Ansible-demo. And this one takes a second too, so I'm going to speed this one up for you. All right, so it came back, and it has said success. So we used the ping module, and all that does is it's a Python module, all of Ansible is written in Python, and it's a Python module that um, sends ping over SSH, and if everything comes back correctly, it'll say Pong here. All right, there you go. You've got an OpenBSD server spun up on Vulture and ready for you to log into. Ideally, you would probably want to run more Ansible playbooks against it for further configuration. Now, how did I do that? Let's walk through the Ansible code real quick to find out. I promise it's very easy code to understand. What up? While I was editing this video, I actually decided to split it into two parts. So now that you've seen the demo, if you just want the code, that is over at git.paranoid.life. So you can go over there and clone it and start using it right away if you think you've got a good handle on what it is, how to use it, and maybe you know Ansible a little bit. If you don't know Ansible that well, or maybe you're just a super nerd and you want to see a walkthrough of the code, definitely stay tuned for part two. I'll be having that drop within the week. It definitely won't be one of these month-long waits like it usually is for my videos. So yeah, stay tuned for that. And of course, as always, 
just remember that uh, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean they aren't out to get you. See you next time.